In this video we repair a uh, 2007 Honda Civic that had an intermittent um, air conditioning. The uh, compressor was not pulling in reliably. Drive it around for a little while and it would start working and adding one pound of refrigerant replacing the bulky uh, um, compressor relay and replacing a bulky intermittent uh, condenser fan and uh, those three things repaired it and it stayed repaired for over a month now and it's very hot today uh, where we are and uh, it was blowing ice cold when I drove the car today so um, do-it-yourself repairs are done at your own risk uh, use uh, safety equipment to protect your eyes wear safety glasses when using any refrigerant uh, do-it-yourself uh, repairs especially when you're using refrigerant uh, or gauges uh, could cause damage to yourself or the vehicle if you do it wrong so watch some other videos as well as this one good luck please uh, post a comment I hope you uh, enjoy the video two thousand seven Honda Civic um, LX and got a new condenser fan uh, radio from Napa their part number is on the box here NOE something and uh, wasn't that bad to install it's like two bolts at the top and make sure the bottom pins line up <clears throat> if you've had any collision damage on a vehicle it may be <clears throat> may require some modification to get a new fan to fit but this car's never had any front end damage in its history I've owned it since new I have some other problems on it uh, the typical uh, inverted gas gauge display and the uh, broken visor on the driver's side and uh, the loose headliner at the rear and I've got a rough idle that I think is the uh, passenger side engine mount needs to be replaced I've got the mount I just haven't had time to do the work so I think we've got the uh, AC problems ferreted out between the uh, clutch relay replacement and the uh, fan replacement uh, all together in parts I think I have maybe a hundred and twenty dollars in parts and this would have been a lot more expensive had I taken it somewhere to ferret out these two problems and I think I'm gonna make a chart for the relays their purpose and leave it in the car because uh, when you're on the side of the road you don't want to be figuring out that you lost a fuel uh, pump relay uh, but the relays are interchangeable so you can swap them around between the AC the uh, compress condense the condenser fan which is on the passenger side the engine fan which is on the driver's side which is a heavier bigger fan and the relay for the throttle uh, control and the relay for the rear window defogger and the relay for um, the fuel pump and if you lose any of those relays while you're on a road trip uh, you're going to want to know what the relays do so ferret it out the way I showed you uh, on this video what the relays do and make a chart and keep it in the glove box because uh, what's on the bottom of the fuse box is really hard to read I find it really and depends on the lighting so I think this is a finished repair and uh, I may add an addendum to this later if uh, if I still have more problems in the future in this year uh, 2022 with the air conditioning on this vehicle and I hope you enjoyed the video uh, Dennis Seatsma Dennis John Seatsma J-O-N there's a lot of other Dennis Seatsmas, but mine's J-O-N. 
Homestead, Florida, United States of America, and uh, I hope this helps you keep your 2007 Honda Civic LX in good working condition. Hello social media, this is uh, Dennis John Seatsma, and I'm a do-it-yourself enthusiast, autodidact, self-taught. Um, I'm going to tell you how I fixed my air conditioning problem, uh, repaired it on my 2007 Honda Civic LX that I bought new, and I can tell you the maintenance history on the vehicle in a bit, but the way I fixed it was uh, I bought this uh, relay at Napa Auto Parts uh, for, oh, I think I had a discount coupon, so it was less than $10. The part number for this vehicle was Alfa Romeo 64 uh, 6242 Alfa Romeo 6242 for the uh, Napa relay and uh, anyway the uh, AC was intermittent I'd have to drive around before the compressor would pull in and the way this air conditioner works on this generation of Honda Civics is uh, all the computer and controls are in this module so sometimes that module fails and you can get one from a salvage yard or you can test it. Uh, there's some good YouTube videos that that I watched uh, that show the diagnostic features of this control unit that are rather impressive. And also one guy did a video on how to test its output to put it into cool mode or to alias it with a jumper or test it with a digital voltmeter. But anyway, um, my problem was not here uh, in this failure. It was this relay, after all these years of, uh, got 164,000 miles on this vehicle since I bought it new. But this relay had turned bul bulky. Well, you need to know what relays you have in the vehicle. So if you look at the end of this video where I repair this vehicle, uh, <coughs> By repa I replaced a relay, I added a pound of refrigerant, and I uh, found that the condenser fan was bad, so I replaced the condenser. That's later in the video. But I spent some time talking about the uh, pressure sender, it's, which is a three-wire on this. Some are three-wire, some are four-wire. I know how older air conditioner systems work on the older GM, but I didn't know uh, on this vehicle. But basically on the three wire you got a reference voltage coming from I believe it's the engine computer and you got a ground and the center wire is the voltage that is uh, an analog voltage uh, that is related to the pressure whether high pressure low pressure but to even put refrigerant in it you have to uh, bypass the relay and I show how to ferret that out and you have to be very any do-it-yourself video is do at your own risk and you can do damage if you don't do it correctly on how to bypass the compressor relay and in some cases you can add a can of refrigerant and it'll have enough pressure in the can to, to kick on the low pressure but that depends on vehicle to vehicle and that may only work on older vehicles but anyway, this one still has a problem with the blending door. I sometimes have to turn the knob left and right and left and right to get the actuator to go to full cool. And it's been a while since I repaired it. Uh, been about 30 days or so. So I wanted to drive it around to make sure I had a good repair here. And so far it's been it's blowing ice cold on a hot, very hot day. It's like over 90 today and it's ice cold coming out of the out of the vehicle um, but some of the relays on this generation are uh, of Honda Civics are exchangeable and I won't name them because name them I'll say it wrong but if you look around in the relay box as I show you later in the video you can ferret that out and swap relays but when I swapped it with one of the relays that controls the uh, throttle position sent, uh, the throttle position I actually put a code in the computer and I had to drive around before the uh, check engine light went off again uh, after I had put the the good relay back where it belonged 
and replace the compressor relay. But the relay does a lot of work in this car because the duty cycle on this compressor is not 100%. The compressor goes on and off as controlled by the computer. And that is based upon the efficiency decided by the computer. So these modern vehicles have very sophisticated air conditioning systems with sensors for I believe temperature and humidity. I could be wrong about this generation having a temperature and humidity sensors but uh, the duty cycle is less than a hundred percent which is why they have the relay to control the compressor. And if that relay is not a hundred percent good you could have it work some of the time and not other time like this one did or it just quits altogether and the compressor's not pulling in uh, you could check the resistance from the relay box uh, to see if you got good resistance on the compressor coil uh, you could jumper the relay but make sure it's the right two contacts because if you get across the wrong two contacts on this four pin relay you could do damage potentially again at your own risk now if all this do-it-yourself stuff makes you go crazy take it to a shop get an estimate uh, talk to them to see if the, if the cost for the diagnostic will be applied to the repair go to several shops uh, you'll be money ahead of the game if you trust the shop ask about the warranty ask about is the shop for sale talk to other people in your where you live to see who does good work in your part of the world uh, these videos are global international so I always say go to your try to find a good shop locally because if you get into do it yourself and you get over your head you're gonna end up taking it to a shop and uh, I normally start start at the dealer uh, for the highest estimate uh, there are good people at every local shop and some of them are got magic wands I don't have a magic wand so anyway, hope you enjoy the video. Uh, again, to repair this vehicle, the fix was I replaced this relay. Number one, to get the compressor going good. I added a pound of refrigerant, and we'll get into that a little bit later. I'll show you the gauges and what I did to add the refrigerant. And um, also uh, replaced the conden uh, condenser fan. The other fan, the one for the engine, was good. It was the condenser fan that wasn't kicking on and I got it to work haphazardly but it wasn't reliable so it was best I replace it and I got that fan at Napa Auto Parts also and they do offer reward points and all that stuff so look for discounts uh, if you order online or talk to the agent at the store also talk to them about their tool rental program at your auto supply places now uh, some people say the best way to get the refrigerant to the right level is to fully evacuate the system using a uh, refrigerant recovery system that I don't have. You'd have to take it to a shop and pay to have that done and have it recharged to the factory spec. So that's not a do-it-yourself thing unless you have a refrigerant recovery system. Topping off the refrigerant is also some people say don't do it. Uh, I think if you knew the voltages for good, bad, high and low uh, and have a good working pressure sensor you could take a volt ohmmeter and haphazardly decide if you... Now the problem with having too much refrigerant is you can damage the compressor and the other problem is is if you add that um, sealant um, leak, leak uh, the leak stuff you can gum up. If you have a system that has corrosion or partially obstructed and you add leak, leak stop, you can gum up the whole system. And if you add too much refrigerant, you can damage the compressor. And if you damage the compressor, you can put contaminants in the system and modern automobiles, you may not be able to flush components properly. You have to replace them. So there's a lot of reasons why you want to have a very experienced well experienced uh, auto air conditioning automotive technician do 
an analysis and give you an estimate because you may be money ahead from having it done professionally with a warranty. Now the problem is with warranties is depending on the shop you go to they may not honor the warranty they'll blame you uh, for some reason. So you want to make sure if you do business with a shop that it's a shop you trust and that you've done business with in the past or other people where you live have done and get estimates. Don't be afraid of getting estimates even if you have to pay for the estimate. Some shops will do free estimates and some will offer a special deal like I saw recently Firestone had on their app uh, a nine dollar AC checkup and uh, I don't want to know what you get for your nine dollars so post a comment if you decide to do that and I'm sure other major change will also do it and uh, I know going to Midas uh, scares a lot of people or going to Firestone scares a lot of or Goodyear or any of the major Tuffy, uh, Pep Boys, any of the major ones you might want to go to scares you because uh, you think oh it's going to be a lot of money but you just don't know until you get an estimate and uh, if do-it-yourself is not for you or this sounds frightening you could stop watching now but I hope you do enjoy the video if you like the video please hit a bell and subscribe and I am not being monetized for this so I'm just trying to help people and I hope this video helps you but again if you do it it's you're at your own risk do it yourself is at your own risk good luck and if I helped you in any way please post a com uh, positive comment and give it a thumbs up thank you this is a 2007 Honda Civic LX 2007 Honda Civic LX I'm trying to put some refrigerant uh, Ponder refrigerant. I got the uh, high side connected, which is the red, and the low side connected, which is the blue. And I'm just trying to put one pound in. It's cooling. I had to jumper the relay. Now, if you get this jumper wrong, you can do damage to the computer. And uh, there's a three way sensor on the high side, but I don't know how that thing works. So, if you want to post a comment and explain how the three way sensor works. So I don't have to jump for the relay, but you want to check this with a volt ohm meter to figure out uh, the relay side will have a resistance on it. The contact side should have no resistance. Should it's a do-it-yourself, so uh, do it at your own risk. And uh, I'm just trying to add one pound, and the high side's reading around two, 175. The low side's reading around uh, 30. When you, when you put this in, you want to rupture the cap. These gauges are pretty inexpensive as well as a uh, air conditioning vacuum pump, so be brave and buy some tools. Alright, I punctured the can, I heard it. And always wear safety glasses when doing this kind of thing. I'm just trying to put one pound in, see how long it takes before it leaks again where I have to add it. The compressor was not pulling in. Okay, so now I open up the low side to add. And I just have to do it a little and shake the can. And uh, the tricky part is getting the jumper on there right. And the uh, fuses are in the owner's manual online for the 2007 Honda Civic LX. But the relays are not marked unless you look around the internet. And I going to post a photograph of that at the very end as long as some photographs I've taken but make sure you don't confuse where you put this jumper now on the contact side you ought to read the compressor on one one of those sides and the other side will be uh, voltage and when I put the jumper in whether the ignition was on or not it uh, it clicked in right away so you know if you did it right even without starting the car I'm trying to do this quick and fast because you don't have time to waste and neither do I. And I've got a little problem with this high side uh, connector and I'm probably going to replace those with a better quality. Okay, I got one can in now. The high side is now reading around, uh, around 275. The low side is now reading around 30. You don't want to go 
in the hydrostatic lock that these can put in too much refrigerant and blow your compressor. But I wish I knew how this three-way sensor worked, otherwise I'd just uh, jump her at the three-way sensor. That tells you if the pressure is too high or too low. And it tells the computer, and the computer eventually tells the relay. And there's some diagnostics you can do too, if you're smart enough to figure out where to find those on YouTube and run this system, see if it's got any codes. But anyway, I know I got a, a slow leak. I've had to put a, about a can in every year. And uh, I think I'm pretty much done here. And, uh, but have a volt meter and double check this uh, connection for where you put the jumper. Make sure it's on the uh, output side of the relay, not the input. Because you can blow a computer if you jump the other side, or at least blow a fuse. Anyway, please uh, like, share, subscribe. Hope you enjoy my video at the very least. I hope, hope this helped you get your AC working. 2007 Honda Civic LX intermittent AC uh, clutches pulling in intermittently um, the other day I put in another uh, pound of refrigerant and uh, about a year ago I'd put another pound in and with uh, stop leak and uh, die marker but uh, I want to check out this uh, triple way switch down here with a digital volt mode ohm meter later but reports say the intermittent is caused by a funky relay so they say swap the relay out now <clears throat> this is a OMRON ohm ohmron G is in golf 8 Hotel Lima dash H71 12 volts 120 ohms and swap it out with a another relay of the same type and see if that solves your problem. Now you could have more than one bad relay because uh, these relays are used for the fans as well and uh, I'm going to go over again later with uh, <clears throat> the uh, jumper wiring on the AC one to make sure you know how to do it and you can't just leave a jumper in there you can put a jumper in for testing or for adding refrigerant, but you can't leave it all the time because there's a duty cycle on this system. The other problem this <clears throat> vehicle has is a bad control module. And online aftermarket is like $220, like part, parts geek. Uh, you can get one from a salvage yard for like 40 bucks, But the control panel is uh, said to be a problem and uh, most people just swap it out with another one I would like to try to see if I can fix the old one though if I end up doing that uh, sometimes you can resolder things on the circuit card and get stuff working again anyway uh, 2007 Honda LX uh, four-door sedan with intermittent clutch for the AC so I swapped out the relay let's see if it does any better in future Still trying to ferret out how this switch works. This high pressure three-way pressure switch. And I got voltage on one of the pins here. And my vision's not good enough to see the labeling on this connector very well. I'm trying with a flashlight and I can't see but it's the other uh, three pins on the switch three pins it's the one on the left it's got the voltage on it and when I connect the test light the test lights going to the negative side of the battery and I connect it I get this reaction where the clutch pulls in The light lights up. On that pin.
clutch pulls in and then drops out and the uh, engine fan comes on. Now I've already kind of determined that the problem was the relay. I changed the relay from uh, one place to another. But now I see the compressor fan is not coming on. So I may have just moved the bad relay around. But I'm still trying to ferret out how this three-way switch works. Three-way. I'm sorry for the bad camera work, but I sure wish I could read the letters on that connector. But of the three pins there, it's the one all the way to the left. And I can't, I can't read it, damn it. My vision is not good enough in this lighting. But it's also marked on the connector. So let me pause the camera for a minute, see if I can read it better with a flashlight. Hang on. I'm going to have to get somebody with better eyesight with me to read those pins on the connector. But... There's a black wire, and that's not the one with the voltage on it. It looks like it's a violet wire all the way on the left. So I assume that uh, it goes from the uh, violet wire to the other two contacts, the center and the one to the right, for the pressure switch to work. But I don't know yet. I'm still trying to find a good video that explains how this works three-way switch and I've got to switch my relays around see if I can get that compressor fan to come on okay I've been uh, looking on the internet uh, all right I can't talk and, and videotape at the same time but anyway uh, on the internet I finally found a diagram for this three-wire sensor and uh, you see the keyway on the connector there uh, the keyway is on the top the uh, 5 volts is on the left the ground is on the right and the center pin is the uh, the voltage for the pressure <coughs> and it's like uh, a low voltage for normal pressure up to like five volts for high pressure or four and a half volts and three wires here are red green and black with black being the ground red being the five volt source or four and a half volt whatever it is and green being the the measurement that goes to the computer so you could jump from green to red on the connector so you can see the connector there you could go green to red and give it high pressure and it ought to run uh, you don't want to ground the green to black because that would give you zero volts which would be low pressure and turn the computer off or turn turn the system off and uh, as far as these fans are concerned is I can't get this fan on the compressor side on the uh, right side of the vehicle I hate these flashlights that flash this uh, motors not running so I gotta <clears throat> check the relay and see if I got 12 volts coming to the fan I think I got a bad fan because they do fail so you want to put like 5 volts or excuse me 12 volts right at the uh, fan connector or jump the relay at the fuse block if you know how to do that <clears throat> and we'll talk about that later but anyway I think I got this uh, pressure thing uh, red green and black black being ground or negative battery red being the five volts or four and a half volts and the green being the the actual pressure so I thought this uh, switch was like uh, I thought this switch was like a jumper situation and it's not it's an actual voltage going to the computer so I hope that and there'll be a diagram at the very end of this video that will be helpful and it took me a long time to find it on the internet but I finally went to hondatech.com and found it 
uh, but it was a photograph. It wasn't a PDF or document or anything. It was a photograph. So, thanks for watching. Okay, 2007 Honda Civic LX four door. I talked a couple of times about the pressure sensor, and it is not a switch. It's a uh, variable voltage. Uh, it's got a five volt reference on the uh, red on the uh, on the pin to the left, and ground on the pin to the right. And the center pin is the voltage. And I've got this back probed to a voltmeter. So I can read the voltage and at the end of the video there's a chart of voltages uh, from low to high but uh, whatever I said elsewhere in the video uh, focus in on this for normal and we'll see what normal is here with the car not running I'm right re reading uh, just a couple millivolts okay with the car running and the compressor engaged and max cold. I'm reading 2.2 uh, volts DC. This is on the center pin. Center pin with the right pin being ground, the left pin being the reference voltage, and the keyway on the top. And the center pin is a voltage proportional to the pressure. And I thought this. In prior uh, comments in this video, I talked about it being a high pressure or low pressure switch, and it's not. It's actually a voltage. And this is on the high side. And uh, my problem, I think, is actually a bad relay. And I may have more than one problem because I am not seeing the uh, compressor fan kick in. So when I get a chance, I'll talk. Okay, now we're up to 3 volts. And I kind of expect that as the uh, system goes up to 5 volts. And again, I had a hell of a time finding the information on the internet as far as the voltages out of this three-way, three-mode pressure switch, three-way on the Honda Civic 2007. I had a hell of a time finding it, but I'm going to put it as a, pho a photograph in the video here somewhere, either at the end, the center, the beginning, whatever. But uh, I apologize for anything I said wrong. I'm not good at editing. So whatever I said about the pressure switch elsewhere, it's actually a voltage. And this uh, compressor is not supposed to run 100% of the time. So that uh, clutch relay, compressor clutch, that is computer controlled, it cycles quite a bit and wears out and breaks. So there's a couple other fan switches in here that you can uh, swap around. But I put a pound of refrigerant in here and I mentioned the pressures earlier in the other segment. But it's really getting cold in the vehicle now. But I'm not seeing that compressor. I'm seeing the engine fan come on. The one on the uh, on the driver's side, that fan, the engine fan's coming on, but the air conditioning compressor fan is not kicking on. So I'm going to have to check the relays, uh, or I may have a bad fan. When these fans do fail, sometimes you got to put 12 volts directly to them to see if they work or not. And the reason why Honda does this is uh, gas mileage. They, they do a lot of things with their engineering to, to uh, make sure they have the best uh, gas mileage. And as the pressure increases, and I guess it's about 80 degrees outside now, maybe 75, 75, 80. But I've got this uh, sending unit, back probe, through the center, which I, looks like a green wire, and, and I, there's, I couldn't see any markings on the connector or the sensor itself, no matter how hard I tried. So there's several things that could cause the clutch not to come in. One could be a bad clutch, bad relay, uh, bad control 
thing in uh, the panel inside sometimes fail. There's a good video that another guy did uh, on the panel. It puts out a ground, uh, but it's too hard to explain. He does a better job. He shows you all the test points on the panel and how to diagnose if the panels failed. It's like a $220 part for the panel, the control unit. Uh, if you buy it from a salvage yard, it's like 40 bucks. But I used a 20, uh, 18 gauge wire to back, uh, solid wire to back probe the center pin. Because, and earlier I showed you a test light where I was connecting a test light to the uh, reference voltage and apparently that was putting a low impedance load and, and causing the light to light up and causing the, that for some reason was causing the clutch to engage. So I don't know if that's good for troubleshooting or not. The best way to bypass is to bypass the relay but you have to make sure you don't you didn't, don't make a mistake when you jump with the relay that you because you can blow, either blow a fuse or damage the computer. But this uh, voltage is uh, keeps coming up. Auto max out. High pressure auto max out around uh, around four and a half volts, I think. Which this is the one of, a good diagnostic to know if you, your system's overcharged or undercharged is the, by the voltage. That's where I'm spending all this time on this on this three wire system. Now some of them have four wire, and I don't know why they do that, but some of the air conditioning systems have four wire instead of a three wire. And to me, the three wire is very straightforward once I understood that this was a reference voltage with a ground, and then the center pin is the output pressure. It's actually an analog uh, device. It's an analog sensor. Now it's coming down in voltage. And so, hope you like my video. I'm trying to put some information out to help somebody else because I couldn't find the information I wanted on this. And there's all kinds of diagnostics too for this panel uh, that I, I'll, other photographs in this video I'll put in there as photographs. So you, if I talk about it, I'll say the wrong thing. So instead, I'll just do it with the photographs, my reference material. And uh, I hope this video is useful for you. Okay, 2007 Honda Civic. In this video segment, we're going to talk about testing the relay and make sure, see what pins are when. So, with a continuity tester, this is a standard relay, 12 volt, it's supposed to be 120 ohm. You check it with the voltometer for continuity or with a continuity tester, see what pins have a resistance. Okay, and that's reading 131 ohms. So these two terminals are going to be the for energizing the relay, the ones with the resistance, and these two will it's copper and gold, and these two will be the. The relay contacts and if you put 12 volts across the two gold ones you should have continuity and uh, before you jumper in anything uh, you connect this to ground on the meter set the meter to volts and find out where your find out what the positive lead where what's energized and what's not okay that's not let's see okay 
Okay. Because I'm finding the, uh, okay, I got 12 volts here. Got 12 volts there. That should be the relay for the fan. The actual contacts and then the coil side should be the side to side ones. So, <clears throat> making sure I have a relay in hand, plugs in like that. I should be able to put my jumper across and get the fan to, to come in. Even with the car not running, I think it's got, it will energize. And I use a 20 gauge wire. And I gotta put the camera down for a moment. Okay, with the car turned on and this relay jumpered, I'm having my uh, fan on the uh, driver's side. So that pretty well proves that that's that <clears throat> for the fan on the driver's side. I can say that's a Probably a good relay because it worked for me and it was installed. So now I'll use my pliers and I'll try this other relay, which should be for the other fan, according to the chart. And again, I want to make triple damn sure get on the right context, not the wrong ones. And I'm there, and that fan is not engaging. So I probably have a bad fan on the passenger side for the compressor side. If I'm doing it right. Okay. So, having said that, I'm going to put this relay back in what I think is problem. Next I'll have to put 12 volts at the right to the fan. And the compressor the compressor clutch is that one. Yeah. And again I'll put a chart on the video somewhere. And I just got the key on. I don't need to have the engine running. Well I don't know if I do or not. It's so quiet. Okay, you can hear the, the compressor kicking in every time I bypass the relay. Okay, so... So I feel like I'm gaining on this. At least I know where the contacts are. And the, having swapped the relay a couple of times. I'm plugging it in the right way. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble plugging this in. Alright, last only other relay I haven't tried is that one. Pull that one out. when I bypass that one. Again, I need to double check the relay so I know which side is. Yeah. What side are the contacts? Times like this, you move too fast, you make a mistake. So let's see what happens. Do this. This one. Hands are shaking. I hate being old. Old and slow. I'm trying to do this when I have the good light. It's hard to do this at night and hold the camera. slow and don't know where to go. Oh dear me. 
And I hope this helps some younger people figure this crap out. Save some money. Okay, no change when I do that, really. So I'm pretty sure the fan on the compressor side's bad. They do fail. They're not hard to replace. They, the engineering on Honda's is really beautiful, I think. Okay, so, all right. Well, all things considered, I think I've got a bad fan. And as far as the air conditioning, I moved relays around and it seemed to have gone away, so see what doesn't work. But I'll keep moving these relays into the clutch position and see to test all of them one at a time. I'll move them around. I'll, and this is the clutch one there. So, hope you enjoy my video uh, and I hope this helps somebody. Okay, this uh, segment we're going to focus on testing relays. The best way to test a relay, there's several ways you could do it, but um, you want to put it into a circuit that has a heavy load on the contacts, such as the engine fan, and you hear it running, and you can identify which the engine's not running, it just have the ignition on. This relay here, when I pull it, should be the, the fan for the engine goes away so we'll say that's a good relay I'll take one of the relays that I think might be bad and put it in its place and you see that's a bad relay because it doesn't start to fan so that was this one originally was in the AC circuit so um, pretty sure that relays this is the bad relay we'll put it aside for a minute and uh, we'll check the other relays. Now this one is for the compressor, the AC compressor. And uh, let's see. Okay, gotta get it in the right way to get it to go in. Okay, that one's good. <sighs> Now, I could not get the other fan, the uh, the fan on the passenger side, the one, they, they call that the condenser fan. I couldn't get that one to come on, no matter what I did. So, oh, now it starts, okay. It's intermittent, so I need to replace that fan. But I was trying to get the bad relay sorted. And this relay is for the engine throttle control. So you want to make sure you got a good relay in there. We'll test it with uh, the way we said. Now oh, it's going to be turned around. Okay, that one's good. When you get a bad throttle relay, that's going to drive you crazy. And. Uh, is it won't idle right okay so that's the throttle you should have a, a, a chart of these relays and then the last one that's interchangeable is the one for the fuel pump it's for the fuel pump well maybe all right now where the hell did I get that from Anyway, it won't run without the fuel pump one, so you want to make sure you get a good relay in the fuel pump. Or you'll suffer. Because you live without air conditioner, but... Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to put the bad relay back into the air conditioning circuit. And you can see it's got a little corrosion on the pins there. So I'm going to leave it until I can get a new one. Now I've seen the uh, 
the uh, I can get a relay like this from uh, from Napa for like ten dollars and the fan I can get from AutoZone for like I think sixty it was so I have two problems I've got a bad relay which was affecting my air conditioner and you can't just jumper these and these relays you, they're important you have to they all have to work so for now I put the bad one back in the AC circuit because I can live without air conditioner the AC was intermittent so anyway um, the other th way I could have proven this fan for the compressor is weird is um, I could have, uh, well actually I did jumper, I put 12 volts from the battery with jumper wires directly to the connector and the fan didn't want to work, so I hit it with my fingers and it started working again, so that told me that I had a bad fan on the condenser side, and these fans are pretty easy to change, uh, Honda did a good, did a good job designing so if you had collision damage, they're pretty easy to change or if they fail. And they do fail. I've had a failure on my other Honda Civic like this with the, uh, but the, if the big fan fails, the one for the engine cooling, that, you notice that one right away. And we'll start the car up here and make sure it still runs. Okay, I got the uh, engine running now and both fans are running. I got to replace that funky fan on the on the compressor side, condenser side. And uh, I've moved the bad relay around to make sure the problem followed the relay. And then I put the relay back into the air conditioner circuit so my air conditioner is going to be intermittent again until I can buy a new relay. And like I say, Napa's got it for 10 bucks, and the uh, fan I can get from AutoZone. So I hope uh, I'm not going to call this a finished video until I actually do the repairs, make sure that I'm right about everything. I know a lot of videos they, they say what's wrong and then say have a nice day, and, but I want to actually prove this. And on the prior segments, I talked a lot about that pressure switch, which. Uh, works quite nicely. Uh, not to, and it's not a switch, it's a sensor. It puts out an analog voltage uh, relative to the pressure. And I showed you earlier with the gauges how to check the high and the low and how to bypass the uh, relay with a jumper to, so you could put refrigerant in. And uh, you could probably do it with the sensor going from the uh, from the high side to the middle, uh, the, the side with the voltage, the red wire, on the sensor to the center wire, which is the green, and it would probably tell the computer to start, but probably the jumper is a better idea, a jumper at the, at the relay uh, for the uh, jumper at the, at the air conditioning relay. But make sure you jump for the contacts, not the coil, because you can blow a fuse or potentially cause some damage to the computer, maybe. But uh, anyway, I hope this uh, video helps someone. Uh, this 2007 Honda Civic and uh, LX. And uh, I read a post somebody was warning about a engine swap that they swapped engines without paying attention to the VIN. And uh, I can't even read the VIN on this one. Huh. Oh, that's weird. Normally you can read the VIN. I know what the VIN is. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I can't read the VIN, but anyway. The guy swapped an engine and find out it wouldn't run. And some, some minor difference in the VIN number. Anyway, beware of that if you swap engines. Research it thoroughly, the VIN number compared to the engine serial number, whatever. 
and having a chart of these relays probably make your own if all else fails I may do that myself but this is the AC compressor relay that I have my finger on and this is the fuel pump and this is the throttle control and then these two were for the engine pans the two on the top with the uh, pretty obvious which is which so, and I don't want to say which is which because I might say it wrong. Anyway, hope, hope my video helped somebody. Okay, I've been to Napa and picked up this, uh, this relay, Alpha Romeo 6242, and installed it. And now my AC seems to work fine. I still have a bulky intermittent, uh, AC condenser fan that I'm trying to think whether I want to replace it with one from AutoZone uh, for half the price of the one at Napa and I like Napa because they've got a better warranty but I still have um, I still have uh, a check engine light that I have to sort And that light. And calm once again, protect with Kim. And brand new, we're not sure, it's America's national radio game show sensation. Come on, turn Where down radio. Home as a home listener, home viewer, or maybe if you're getting us as a podcast. Okay, anyway, uh, to reset that, it says turn it to position two and hold down the select until all of them start flashing in the service mode, which I hope happens soon. I can't get it to work. Oh, did it go? No, it says oil life is 40, so didn't do the reset. <coughs> Put it in position two. It has to go into the service mode first. Let me try this again. Turn the key off. Turn it on to position two. hold down the select reset button until it goes till they all flash in the service sometimes it takes a while I guess hmm I can't get it to go into service mode hmm that's interesting oh uh, there it went Okay, oil life. It's forty percent oil life. <coughs> Can't get it to reset. The other way to reset it is to uh, remove the hundred amp fuse or pull the negative on the battery. According to the videos I saw on YouTube for this 2007 Honda Civic. I need to get it to go into service mode. Hmm. That's interesting that I can't get that to work. Hmm. Still good. Got the check engine light. Turn the car off again, and then go back into position two. There's two, and then hold down the select reset button till all of them start flashing. Should go into service mode, according to the videos I watched on YouTube. I can't get this one to go into service mode. Huh. That's interesting. Cannot get that to go. I can get it to oil life, but I can't get the dang thing to go into service mode. Maybe I have to turn the key on while holding it. Let me try that. I'm going to put the camera down for a moment. 
Okay, no matter what I do, I can't get it to go into the service mode. It won't go into service mode, no matter what I do to it. Can't get it to go into service mode. Hmm. <sighs> Starts up okay. AC's coming on cold. Like I say, I still need to change that condenser fan. It doesn't want to work all the time. The relay is good for it. It just I don't know what to do with this thing to get it to go into service mode. Let me just try again from scratch here. Turn it all the way off. Take the key out. Put the key in. Turn it to position one. Position two. Let it finish beeping. And then hold down the select. Probably a technique to this. Probably people that know how to do this are laughing right now. But I cannot get it to go into service mode. <laughs> <laughs> 